Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we get to take a look at our actually our first look at the brand new Adobe Lightroom 5. Now as you know just like in the past Lightroom has usually comes out as a public beta first and then within a short amount of time thereafter the shipping version ships. So it gives uh, photographers a chance to test it, make sure the workflows are still good, make sure their you know, improvements are still working the way they would expect, let us know about any significant bugs, and then we, of course, ship the final version. So uh, if you're watching this you know, early on, this is going to be taking a look at the public beta. But more importantly, I'm going to show you my top five favorite features in Lightroom 5. Now keep in mind, I'm showing you five of my favorites, but these aren't the only new things in Lightroom. There are lots of little things that I won't get a chance to talk about today or show, but just know that Lightroom has several little bitty enhancements all the way throughout the application. So, uh, something we call JDI or just do it enhancements. So my top five favorite features, let's take a look. I'm in Lightroom 5 and I've got a collection set up here where it's uh, my Lightroom 5 collection. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you my first uh, favorite feature with this image. So let's go in, let's hit the develop module. I can either tap the letter D on my keyboard or just hit develop in the menu. And the first thing actually, before I even show you the feature, uh, the white balance is way off on this image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust it. There we go. So it looks a little, bit, a little bit more human there. And uh, this image has not been retouched at all. So this is like raw, right out of the camera, converted to a DNG. I just adjusted the white balance. So now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And when I zoom in, I see a couple things. I see a little pimple there that I would normally take care of. And then I see kind of a laugh line that I would get rid of. Now in the prior version of Lightroom, I could easily take care of the pimple just by using the spot healing tool. Uh, so I would go ahead and make the brush a little smaller just by hitting the brackets on my keyboard. And we'll go ahead and do that. And it allows me to pick it up, move it around, and grab an area where it will heal or use that area to heal from. Now that's great. However, and when we come down to this laugh line over here on the side, that would be a trip to Photoshop because the, it, you know, the spot healing tool just wouldn't be a, a easy tool to do something like this with. However, if I go ahead and just dial my brush out size down here a little bit, I can now for the first time do a non-circular heel. So I can go ahead and just drag the tool all the way down the laugh line and let go. And then just like the regular spot healing brush, it will let me pick it up, grab the source of where it's going to heal that from. And there goes my laugh line. So great new enhancement, the ability to do non-circular healing. Now that means that, that we get to do a lot more in Lightroom, a lot more non-destructive stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it once again. We'll come over here, we'll make our brush bigger. And uh, this is great for things like strands of hair or stray hair that's flying out there. If that's all the photo needed, then it would save me a trip to, to Photoshop because I can just do this quick correction here. And again, I can pick it up, tell it where to grab the source from and make that correction right here in Lightroom. Let's do one more. Uh, this guy got a tattoo that he now regrets. So once again, we can just go ahead and I don't have to get dragging a straight line. I can just dra draw all over this, get my healing just right, let go, pick it up, grab the source that I want, and away we go. So this will be a huge boon to people using Lightroom because in the past, these would have been trips to Photoshop because the tools in Lightroom just wouldn't let me do something as intricate as that or as oddly shaped as that tattoo. Now I can do that non-destructively here in Lightroom because it's a spot healing adjustment that I could always come back to, always grab it, always turn it on, turn it off, readjust it, do whatever I wanna do, and that's the beauty of doing this in Lightroom. All right, so now that was my first favorite feature, the non-circular spot healing tool. Let's go to my second favorite feature. Now, in this case, we've got this doorway, and there's a couple things wrong with it. Number one, it's uh, crooked. The, you can tell by the steps. They're going up and to the right a little bit. But even beyond the stairway just being crooked, the perspective of the doorway is off. It's leaning. Uh, you know, For example, this is like a straight line. This is more cur or leaning inward. The perspective of the whole image is off. 
Now again, that would be a trip to Photoshop using the crop tool, perspective, uh, option, so forth and so on. But now in Lightroom, I can just go ahead and scroll down the develop panel here. And I get down to my lens corrections, which turning lens correction on or off for this image doesn't do anything because it's, it's not necessarily a lens problem. But there's a new feature called Upright. And there are several functions for it. Right now, Upright is off. I can tell it to go fully automatic. Just level the image, uh, straighten it vertically, or go full, meaning uh, enable the full level horizontal and vertical perspective corrections meaning I can go in then and try it out with either either one of these options to see what I like best. And of course, I always like to start with auto to let the computer do its best way of doing it and seeing if I like it. And auto worked beautifully on this. So not only are the stairs straightened, but now the perspective is better in better uh, shape here using that new upright command. Okay, so that was my second one, upright. My third favorite feature, and this is really gonna be cool for people uh, that need to perhaps adjust certain areas of a photo, um, relight a photo, which we're going to see in this in example here in a moment. And uh, it's beyond what we had before with just simple um, uh, vignettes. So for example, I could put a vignette on the photo, but as you know, vignettes typically are in the center and they, you know, darken the edges all the way around. Well, now we've got a new tool in our tool chest here in the develop module. Well, we've got crop, we've got the spot healing, red eye removal, the gradient uh, filter, and the adjustment brush, but now there's a new radial filter. And the way this works is when I click on it, I can pick the starting point. It doesn't have to be in the center of the photo, it could be anywhere in the photo. So I can start right here and use my radial filter to go outward. And now the radial filter is adjusting wherever I put that circle. And right now it's adjusting the exposure of the opposite. In other words, it's adjusting the exposure of everything outside that circle. So I can darken everything else except just her face. And that gives that more of that dramatic look that we're looking for. Now, if you wanted to do the opposite, you can actually invert the mask. You could say, well, you know, make everything else adjust it, uh, or make, I'm sorry, make the center adjust it instead of everything else. So there we go, we can do it either way. So if we wanted to lighten her, you know, her face is already light enough or well exposed, but if we needed to, we can just do just that facial area again without a trip to Photoshop to do these kinds of adjustments. So now I'll do the uh, example I gave earlier. And what makes this really cool is not only was I able to adjust it, you know, where I wanted it, and we were pretty much seeing everything in this photo, but let's go to this photo here where I took this as a landscape uh, on a outing with uh, Joe McNally and some of the other great photographers out there. And this was up in Traverse City, Michigan. And this church had no light whatsoever. So I was using just the natural light coming in from the window. And so we can see the light here shining onto the floor. We can see the light shining against the um, wall here. And I thought, well, you know, when I, when I brought this photo up to try it as an example. Now, I did this a couple years ago. So I completely forgot what was inside this church. And I, I swear to God, I did not, I was shocked when I tried this because I wasn't expecting the result. So what I was going to do is I was going to come over to the window light here, shine in on this railing and just make it brighter. But then something happened. Not only when I put it over the window and then inverted the mask, I saw, wait a minute, there's words on the wall there. There's writing on the wall that I had no idea was there in this photo. Never for a day would I have remembered when I shot this, that there was some actual writing against the wall that I didn't see in the photo, but it was captured in the raw data. It's there. I can now uh, extend this out, get more of that, move this around. And it's kind of like I'm, I have my own light that I can move around the photo as I'm walking around in the room, relighting this photo and seeing things in the photo that uh, otherwise I would not have seen. And the beauty of this also, other you know, uh, um, that makes it better than a vignette is I am not stuck with just one. If I wanted to relight the photo here, I could do the same thing, invert the mask and um, adjust the photo in this spot. So I can make this bigger and bring this down. If I needed some light back here, I can make as many of these as I need and put them all around the room, lighting various areas of the room as if I'd set up some elaborate lighting scheme in this building, which I did not obviously do. I was using the natural light coming in from the window. 
So great, great, great radio filter effects that I can now do on my photos. And again, non-destructively in the develop module, I can turn them on, turn them off, delete them, add more, come back, adjust them, do whatever I want to do. So great. That was my number three. Number four, let's go back to the um, library module here. And I'm going to switch over to a different collection. Uh, one that I used to show when Lightroom 4 first came out with video editing. And um, I have this collection of images here from a shoot. And of course, we have a still image of the model getting her makeup done. We have a still image of me doing a production shot or getting a production shot done. And then we actually have a video. This is a video that was captured of me doing the shoot and then the resulting images. Now, the problem would be in the past is that while I could have the stills and I could have the video, I could not have them both together in a slideshow. So my fourth favorite feature is videos in the slideshow module. So for example, if we go back to the first image here and we just go ahead and hit play, we will not only see, I told us to start off with uh, my uh, opening screen here being my um, identity plate, then it goes on to the next image and uh, I can advance these by hand, but then it will go to the next image, production shot, great. But now uh, that next image is actually a video. And so we see the video playing back here in Lightroom um, in, in the slideshow. And again, I can go next, 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 and in the show. So great to have video um, now a part of our slideshows so that we can not only see them, but you know, as part of video, but now we can actually do the thing that people always want to do. Because if you're capturing video with your DSLR and stills at the same time, you probably do want to show them together. And now you'll be able to using the slideshow module. All right, so that takes us to number five. What's my number five? Well, my number five is really going to be a game changer for me. Now, let me explain. Well, my Lightroom catalogs are always with me. They're on my MacBook Pro, they're with me all the time. But my thousands and thousands and thousands of images, once I'm finished, they're actually on a file server um, in my studio that's backed up and you know, off-site storage and all that. So I can't carry all of those around with me all the time. But there have been times where I've been out and about traveling, showing a client something, uh, working with someone, and I would think, oh, let me show them a quick slideshow, or oh, let me export a web image, or oh, let me you know, adjust this image a little bit more. And I can't because the images are offline. So that has always been a problem of Lightroom. If you don't have the images with you, you can see thumbnails, you can see a little bit of a preview, but you couldn't really do anything with the images until you connected that drive back up that actually contained the images. So let me show you. I've got a uh, folder here on my server. Uh, it's got these 56 photos in it. These are photos um, from last year's Photoshop world that I, I did a photo shoot with Amanda. Now, if I head out to the finder here, there's my server. There it is mounted. And I'm going to go ahead and unmount the server. Now, when I do that and head back to Lightroom, Lightroom does what it always does. It says, hey, you've disconnected that drive. I don't know where those images are anymore. You know, let me know when you reconnect or let me know where you've moved those images to because I can't do anything with them until you reconnect. But that's no longer true. Because now Lightroom, my fifth favorite feature of Lightroom 5 is something called smart previews. And with smart previews, you can you have to build them ahead of time. So you can't build them you know, after the images are gone. You have to build them while the images are connected. But once you build your smart previews, you can disconnect that drive, you can leave, and know that you not only have access to the images and see them as thumbnails, but you have a uh, the maximum uh, size of the longest edge of those images right now, uh, as smart previews is 2048. So an image that's 2048 by whatever uh, that's with you all the time if you build your smart previews. So now instead of a question mark on each of these images, it's giving me this black box that's letting me know, hey, well, you don't really have that image connected. It's in offline mode, but guess what? I can now uh, take one of these images. I can see a larger preview of it. I can zoom in on it and get a nice preview. 
I can even take it over to the develop module and I can work on the image. So for example, using that spot healing brush, I can go ahead and uh, take care of some of the uh, pimples here. Yep. Didn't want to make it bigger, just wanted to move it around. And I can continue working on this image even though that drive is no longer connected. So what magic is this? What's going on in the background when we're doing this kind of work? Well, what's going on in the background is Lightroom is writing those adjustments to those smart previews. When I connect that drive at some point, Lightroom will then write those, uh, write because it's keeping this information in the Lightroom database. So it will use them on the smart previews or it will use them on the real images if the real images are present. And of course, the real images always take precedence over the smart previews. So since 2048 by whatever is usually large enough, more than large enough for my web images, I could export this image out. I could even print it in some cases if I don't want to go too large. I would basically have this image available as a slideshow, um, print, web, even a book if we would keep them small, but I can do anything I would normally do with this image even though it's in an offline mode. And of course the smart previews take up a lot less space than I can carry them with me uh, for the images that are important to me as opposed to carrying the actual large raw files. So if, how do we build these? Now, if we go back out, of course, these were already built for the images that I have here. But if I go to, uh, for example, uh, let's go to my book demo here. I've got an image here. I can select as many as I want. And when I'm ready to build smart previews, I just go up to the library menu, come down to previews and choose build smart previews for whichever images I want to build smart previews for. So you don't have to build them for all of them. You don't have to carry around all this extra preview data. You could carry it around just for the images that you want. Now there's another place to do this. It's, um, this is probably where most people will do it going forward. When you import, you can choose to build smart previews upon import. And that's where I'm probably gonna do it most of the time. Um, because that way I'll be building them as I'm bringing the images into Lightroom, as I'm discarding the images that I don't want, then of course the previews go with it. And that way I don't ever have to remember to do it going forward. So smart previews, my fifth favorite feature of Lightroom 5. Now again, there's lots of enhancements. There's enhancements in the book module that I'll probably show as a bonus clip for my Creative Suite podcast, but lots of enhancements. Take a look at Lightroom 5 public beta. Can't wait for this to ship, and I'm loving it. This is exactly what I want. Lightroom just keeps getting better and better and more usable. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you next time.